Well, that seems to be one legal case that Mullen Auto may have just won. Hi again, everyone. I hope you are doing really well. So, as a few of you who know and followed my channel for a while, I've had a bit of a gap from covering the stock of Mullen Automotive, ticker symbol MULN, uh, but I've started to try and get back into it a little bit recently. Uh, and, you know, there's obviously quite a few YouTubers out there who do follow the stock, and, you know, obviously I appreciate those who support me and, you know, like to interact with my channel. Uh, and I, you know, I follow and I look at a number of other people who follow the stock. Now, one of them is obviously Cal from Financial Journey. And, you know, I've only just really kind of come across this in the last few hours about what actually happened because when I'm trying to do my own research, I looked into his channel to see um, what he's published because he's used, I always kind of thought he's like really at the forefront of what's going on with the company. He's he basically taken on the role of a journalist. He interacts with people who work for Mullen. Um, you know, he's had interviews with Dave Mitchery, uh, also Randy Marion, their main dealership partnership. So he's, you know, he gets, he's a great source and obviously like all those conversations he had with um, Lawrence Sarge. Now, he's obviously gets great information and inside information about what's going on with the company. Uh, but then when I went on his channel, all of his videos on Mullen had been taken down or at least privatized. And it was another YouTuber, I think it was Sam I Am, who alerted me to the fact that, uh, you know, he, at Financial Journey had actually been issued a cease and desist letter from Mullen Automotive. Uh, and obviously it's a reason why maybe I should actually also be on X or Twitter, but I don't know, one day I'll, perhaps one day, I don't know. Anyway, that's a, it was actually a little bit of a interesting scenario. I, I'm, I was actually a bit shocked to hear that he got uh, sent that from Mullen Automotive because, you know, for, you know, at least the last 12 months, at least, as long as I've been following this stock, he's been, you know, really kind of a great conduit of information for what's going on with Mullen Automotive. Um, and I think that has obviously sent, you know, put him in the spotlight amongst both the company and the investor, the retail investor scene. But I think the fact that they're silencing him does not look good. It's, you know, they, they've used his platform to get messages across. The fact that David Mitri has actually spoken with Cal and, you know, had views published on it um, sort of shows that I feel like he's almost been double crossed a little bit. Uh, in that sense, I know obviously Cal, Cal did take a real journalist approach where he, you know, he kind of let people say their piece and he would give his opinion on things, which is totally fine. He's entitled to give his own opinion. He's not advertised as an unbiased, uh, journalist or anything, but, um, yeah, that was a bit scary. And anyway, it got me thinking, why would they do it now? Why would they try and silence Cal? Because, um, you know, he's obviously said a lot about Marlon Merv in the past, sometimes positive, but he also tells things how he sees it, which is something, you know, I like, I really appreciate about that. And I think given what's coming this week, we've got the, the vote for the reverse stock split, um, uh, and, you know, what's going to potentially happen with the stock going forward. Uh, perhaps the Mullen legal team kind of saw it as an opportune moment to try and silence perhaps one of the more influential voices um, about the company at the moment, at least among the retail scene. Now, it's no secret that Mullen Automotive um, has a large retail share base holder holding, and obviously, for lack of a better word, they're pissed off because the stock has performed poorly. Uh, now, I guess you could say that some of the information that Mullen Automotive shareholders have learnt have come through Cal, which, you know, just fair enough. He's kind of been one of the more transparent sources to find out what's going on with the company or to try and give his two cents. He's always said it's not financial advice, and most people wouldn't understand that. Uh, I think by trying to silence him at this time, as we come into this this vote and, uh, you, know, you know, it's obviously a, a testing time, it kind of will perhaps throw a bit of a dampener on, you know, the shareholders, uh, those that the company has often complained about being too, uh, too, having too much of a voice and, you know, at times hassling the company for information. Uh, you know, the comp David's come out and sort of said that, like, we want to try and be more transparent. And we understand that now from the retail um, shareholder perspective that we need to put more information out there. And, you know, the greatest, one of the greatest conduits that they've had to do it, they've, they've actually gone and tried to shut down. I'm not a legal expert or anything like that, but uh, from what I understand, those sort of cease and desist letters, they're not really worth that paper that they've written on, especially in a case like this, I don't think so. Like, obviously, he's not advertising as financial advice. Um, what was kind of interesting is I kind of thought like, well, I've kind of also been reasonably critical of the company and you know, the operations as well. And, you know, 
not that I'm like as big as financial journeys are like about six times bigger than me. Uh, but why hasn't a channel like mine or business dad or some other, um, you know, influential, not, I wouldn't say influential, but some other like kind of sizable, uh, source that does talk about the stock. And i at first I thought as well, maybe it's because I actually post from overseas, but from what I understand, I think Kel doesn't actually even live in the United States as either. I think he actually lives in Canada. I, I could be totally wrong on that, but, um, you know, it's they're sending the letters overseas, but I guess he because he's had official interactions with Mullen, he's uh, a little bit more on the radar. He's kind of a little bit more like Lawrence Hodge because uh, he's had interactions with them. They could actually legally serve him with papers to say, or to not serve him papers, but issue a cease and desist letter to them to stop them to try and stop them from talking about uh, what's going on with the company. And I think, like in the case of someone like my channel and you know other channels that are covering it. Because we're not doing official interviews or anything like that, or talking with people uh, who would be seen as having a bit of a voice, we're not. We can't be targeted for this sort of silencing, and I think that's going to hold up. Uh, yeah, so maybe you know, it was a case that Cal got a little bit too close to something that's going on with uh, Marlin Automotive. Uh, you know, I'd love to hear what you guys all think about the whole situation. Do you think you know? Do you think if once this whole thing blows over, that Cal will ever actually come back and cover the company again, or do you think he's ready to? you know, wipe his hands of it. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it anyway. Um, but I guess like the one big thing, it's actually a bit of a, you know, a bit of a shot at freedom of speech. You know, Cal being silenced or saying what he what he thinks and like, you know, trying to do his best to understand what's going on with the company, which is what any good shareholder um, should be doing is they're trying to understand what is going on with the business. And that's what he does. And he, tr he shares his findings with the public and Mueller or Merv has some problem with that. And, you know, in my opinion, it doesn't really bode well with me, and I don't think it's going to bode well with many other shareholders in Mullen Automotive. Uh, yeah, anyway, share your thoughts on the whole Cal situation down below, uh, and also anything going on with Mullen that you, uh, you know, obviously a big week, let me know what's going on with that, what you think is coming up coming up with all that. I'd love to hear from you all. Um, I'm trying my best to keep the videos more regular. As you can see, I'm just doing more of an uncut and virtually unedited versions of these videos now. I just, I'm just so time pressed. I want to keep doing my YouTube. I actually enjoy doing it, uh, but I'm just trying to be a little bit more raw in what I'm doing, I guess. Uh, which maybe it's good. You know, I'm not trying to edit what I'm saying. I'm just going and saying it. I'll probably stuff up things though, but it is what it is. Anyway, till next time, everyone. May the markets trade in your favor. Cheers.